We just had so much fun on the Saturday reaction show of the College Football Power Hour that we are back for more after what I think is going to be one of the games of the season after week one, LSU and USC in Las Vegas. The Trojans take this one 27 to 20. And there were a lot of questions about both of these teams, Fitz and Adam. It were a lot of questions about the quarterback. You know, you lose Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels on both sides. Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks. What do Miller Moss and Garrett Nuss Meyer, USC and LSU respectively, how do they take over these starting roles? And also, historically bad defenses on both sides last season. Both LSU and USC move on for their defensive coordinators. Completely new look defenses this year that we saw on full display. But like I said, the Trojans take this one. LSU starts 0-1. For the fifth consecutive season, Fitz, we'll start with you. Some of your biggest takeaways wait, wait, from wait, a little battle gonna, in the desert. We're not going to acknowledge. I mean, that 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 hurts your soul to say this, right? Like, um, the, the yeah. only one for you is, is diff- I mean, let's just get it's tough. Yeah. Start, like, rip the it, bandaid it off. It is. The you know what? It does suck, Fitz. Let me turn, put my uh, my purple and gold glasses on really quickly. As a, an alumni of Louisiana State University, yeah, it tastes like vinegar coming out of my mouth. I will say that. <laughs> I, I, this is what really blew me away because you mentioned two new quarterbacks. And over the course of the weekend, Adam, I felt like we saw a lot of quarterbacks that got their moment and they weren't necessarily ready. In this game, I thought we saw two quarterbacks that frankly looked like they were ready for the moment. They looked like they were ready for the game. Both of them looked more capable than I expected. So I was really impressed by how high the level of play was from both of them. Uh, you, you hit a spot on, Fitz. I, I think the interesting part about Nussmeyer and Miller Moss is they're great stories in college football of sticking it out when you didn't have to stick it out. In today's day and age where every quarterback wants to leave, transfer, go find another opportunity, these guys sat and waited for years. Uh, that is not common in college football. Uh, I think for Brian Kelly and and for for Lincoln Riley, one of the best recruiting jobs those guys have done is keep them on their roster throughout the throughout the last couple of years. So these two guys are both really veteran quarterbacks who are playing their first start, uh, and I or you know Miller Moss started the bowl game, but their first big time real regular start, season yeah. game, yeah, real start. And I thought they both played lights out. I mean, it was it was really a fun game to watch. Um, obviously, at the end. The thing that won that game for USC is that two-minute drive, and Miller Moss executed it perfectly. I mean, that that is textbook, two-minute drive to go win the game. It's exactly what you want. Miller Moss was poised. Uh, he got the ball to the sideline. Uh, the, the, uh, the ability to to I think communicate with Lincoln Riley during that drive. Um, you know, that that's the part that I that I don't think fans quite realize how important that helmet communication is on those two minute drives. I guarantee you Lincoln Riley's telling Miller Moss, hey, you can't take a sack here. Hey, get this ball to the sideline. Hey, re- hey, look at Jacoby Lane on this play. Like he's talking to him right before the ball is being snapped because they're going fast and they're not you they, the the headset's on the whole time. So I think that helps a lot, especially for a first time quarterback. But I mean, Miller Moss executed in the biggest moment moments and uh, I think showed he's he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten that, this season. Yeah and Caroline I would also say you mentioned the defense we have to give both defenses a lot of credit in this game right like both of these defenses came out far better than I expected and I've heard a lot about USC adding 1400 pounds to be ready for Big Ten <laughs> football but frankly they looked ready for Big Ten football like I, I do think as much as we joke about it Caroline the, the defenses were much better in this game than we expected. Much, much improved. And you saw kind of instant change and instant upgrades for both defenses. You know, I, I noticed several times, you know, on the USC side, the pressure that they were able to get up front. At least you wanted to run the ball a whole lot more than they did, but USC wasn't going to let him. And on the other side, at least you got a ton of pressure on Miller Moss. They were in his face a good bit uh, of the second half. So those aren't things that we saw from either of these teams last season. And frankly, if, you know, I would have taken an app throughout the entire second half, which if anybody in America did, you would have missed out <laughs> a lot of good football. But if you would have told me that LSU won that game or USC won that game based off of what we saw in the first half, frankly, I wouldn't have been surprised because we got a master class in quarterback play from really both Miller Moss and Garrett Nussmeyer, a certain sense of poise that I don't think you see very often in first time starters. But I yeah. think the difference between USC and LSU in a very closely contested game, that in the second half, whenever Whenever LSU started to build momentum, whether it was defensive stops or picking up big first downs here and there, they couldn't build upon it. Whereas when USC was able to pick up some first downs, they were able to piece together chunk play after chunk play and just kind of wear away at that LSU defense in the second half where LSU offense was kind of hard to come by later in that second half. 
Yeah, I, I think too. Th- this is a completely different looking USC program on the defensive side of the ball than what we've mm-hmm. seen. And they, you just For mentioned sure. those critical moments when LSU got some momentum. USC, USC was able to get some stops, and that that is not common for USC in the last couple of years. And I, I think we really got to give Lincoln Riley credit for how he rebuilt this defense in the off season. I mean. Lincoln Riley fires one of his best friends last year, Alex Grinch, who's been his defensive coordinator for a long time. It was tough for him to move on clearly because people thought he should have done it for the last few years and and didn't. Um, And then goes out and makes two huge hires in Danton Lynn and Eric Henderson as his co-defensive coordinators. Danton Lynn comes from UCLA, uh, obviously a great play caller, but what we saw on, on, on film today, uh, but this looks like a completely different USC defense. They look physical. They look like they're ready for the big moment. They look like they're dominating at the point of attack. Uh, it, that is not the USC program we've, we've seen. It wasn't the USC program we saw under Clay Helton. It wasn't the USC program we saw the last two years under Lincoln Riley. And, uh, and I think it's, it's exciting for USC fans, especially as you move to the Big Ten where football is more physical, to kind of have this new, this new shot at life for the physicality of the USC football program. Well, and USC, I can't believe I'm saying this, is actually a little under the radar through the course process of this conversation. We've been so obsessed with Oregon going in and what Oregon looks like. If you're USC, I don't think people have been paying that same level of attention. So it gives you the opportunity now. If you're USC, you turn around and you say, hey, we're, we're flying under the radar a little bit. We don't have the same level of pressure. And they do look like they're ready to compete at that level. So I, I think the Big Ten got a lot more interesting. And, you know, Adam, you said in yesterday's show, the Big Ten's the deepest conference. I kept watching the USC and thinking, man, that proves your point. I think, too, Fitz, when you look at USC's schedule throughout the rest of the year, one of the reasons they haven't gotten that that much excitement is because of how brutal their schedule is. I mean, having to play LSU week one, the, as we saw tonight, having to play Notre Dame end the season, having to play Penn State, having to play Michigan, uh, it's it's not an easy road for them. It, the, the path to the playoff isn't super clear. As I was watching them play, the, the USC looks better than I thought. And I, and I kept thinking to myself, how does USC make the playoff? How do they possibly win the Big Ten? The path is tough, right? To to have to go play Penn State and Michigan and the end the season playing Notre Dame, it's not clear. But I will say there is a lot of momentum and excitement around USC, and I think rightfully so. I think you got to give Lincoln Riley credit, and uh, and if they can find a way to win a couple of those big games, and if Miller Moss plays the plays the way he played today in the biggest moments, they're gonna they're gonna knock some of those teams off. They're gonna win a game against Penn State or Notre Dame, and then depending on how the Big Ten plays off plays out, all bets are off. Um, but Caroline, I got to ask you, so is, is Brian Kelly on the Caroline hot seat now after this loss? So I will say this, the, uh, <laughs> if, if anyone's unfamiliar with the LSU fan base, uh, very, very short fuse and very, very high expectations, which leads to a coach's shelf life in Baton Rouge being about that of like an avocado, um, <laughs> awfully short. So yes, the Twitter brigade uh, of LSU is coming for Brian Kelly's job. And look, I, I, he's not in the hot seat, okay? Brian Kelly is not getting fired because he lose to USC week one after back-to-back 10 win seasons, getting to the SEC championship in year one and having a Heisman Trophy winner in year two. But there is a really, really high level of frustration around LSU fans for losing this game every single year. Yeah. And look, this was a game that LSU absolutely could have won. And it, it's little mistakes and shooting yourself in the foot, whether it was, you know, the the silly penalty that Kyron Lacey took after a great catch in the end zone, whether it was the targeting call in LSU safety, Jarden Gilbert, where that was essentially ended the game right there. Uh, a lot of just sloppy penalties that set LSU back behind the eight ball. So no, he's not on the Carolina hot seat. And yes, <laughs> You're going to hear that from a lot of LSU fans just out of this certain sense of frustration. But with LSU in year three under Brian Kelly, with everything that he's already achieved, now the expectation is college football playoff. Now that the field has expanded, that's exactly where LSU fans expect to be is in that conversation. And frankly, I know it's week one, but falling 0-1, I don't see a path to LSU getting into the college football playoff with the gauntlet that they have ahead of them. But it, I think it's the, so early. The, it's so early. The silver though. lining, the, though, is the way that Garrett Nussmeyer looked. Yeah. It, the silver lining isn't just that. I mean, we can't have our cake and eat it here, too. I just said that I think USC looks far more competitive in the Big Ten than I thought they would be. So LSU just lost a game 
to what looks like a very good football team that they could have won, be it two or three plays go differently. Like I think that's the context that really matters here. Your quarterback played better than you expected. You competed yeah. in a neutral side game against a great opponent. Like the sky is not falling. We talk about like stock up, stock down. I wouldn't suddenly be selling LSU at them simply because they lost a game to a good football team. This wasn't a bad loss. This was one of those epic games that we'll look at as a building block if things go better the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I think that the one of the most frustrating things for LSU fans just has to be how you lost that game and the reason why you <laughs> lost it. I mean, the yeah. reason why is is you look at the stat sheet, you lost a turnover battle and lost the penalty battle big time. I think 10 mm -hmm. penalties for LSU today. That That's why you lost. And for Brian Kelly, you know, that is – uh, what he's going to say is that's unacceptable for his program to lose a penalty battle the way they did. You mentioned the penalty, the 15 yarder, Caroline, like, like that kind of stuff in Brian Kelly's program is, shouldn't fly and isn't going to fly moving forward. So, I think also, L, uh, USC did not manage that game super well. I mean, there, there were there were t times in that game. I mean, you go you go back to halftime. Uh, the the drive before halftime, USC mismanaged the clock, went to halftime with a timeout in their pocket m and missed a field goal, and then also had the first drive of the of, of the second half and went three and out. Uh, so I, when those two sequences happened, I was like, man, USC is not going to win this game. Um, and to still come back and win it says a lot about USC and Miller Moss, but also uh, it's frustrating for LSU fans. Final thought on on LSU is, and you just mentioned Caroline the excitement around uh, Garrett Nussmeyer. I think people forget that Garrett Nussmeyer was in a neck-to-neck -neck quarterback competition with Jaden Daniels um, very recently. The Heisman Trophy winner, uh, going to be a star in the NFL. I mean, Nussmeyer is a dog, and he showed it today. Uh, just the, I thought the way he managed the game, he looked, he looked confident. He was poised. He was making quick decisions, but he wasn't rushing his decisions. I, thought, I just thought he looked really good, uh, even better than I thought he was going to look, and I kind of had to remind myself that this was the Garrett Nussmeyer that everyone's been waiting to see the last few years that was neck-to-neck with Jaden Daniels, uh, and I think it's going to have a, bi a big-time season for LSU. What we just learned is we need a new segment on the show called Puppies or Dogs. Like, so we, we figure out whether or not they're actually dogs or they're yeah, just faking yeah. it. That's all I can think of now. I like that. Uh, to take LSU defensive coordinator Blake Baker's term, poodles, you're either a oh. dog or you're a poodle. And he said, we don't want any poodles around here on, on the LSU defense. Before we wrap here, we can't end this show without giving Kyron Hudson at least a little bit of a hat tip that we've got yeah. the catch of the year. I'm calling it now. It's the catch of the year early in that game. A one handed grab doing his best OBJ impression. Really impressive wide receiver performances from both sides. Kyron Hudson, Zachariah Branch at USC and Kyron Lacey and Aaron Anderson from LSU. Uh, Hudson's catch early in the game was uh, unbelievable, but the unbelievable. most impactful catch was that catch on the two minute drive on right. the and the the whole shot. I mean, that was a perfect throw by Miller Moss. It was it was cover two where you got the corner playing the flat, the safety playing over top, and you have about a four yard window to put that ball in. And Hudson made a great catch on that. But I mean, just think about USC's receiver room. You just said some of those names. How about Zachariah Branch almost housing that kickoff return? Uh, I mean, that dude can absolutely fly. There's a lot of talent on this on this USC roster. This USC skill position group, and you know, I, again, I think USC's offense is going to be going to be a threat this season in, in, in the Big Ten. I think my biggest takeaway from this game, Fitz, you and I were talking about or before this season, teams that might be overrated or underrated. I thought USC was overrated because I didn't buy in to the defensive upgrades. We saw it on full display tonight. That defense very much so is upgraded and looks at least to be Big Ten ready. Fun little Sunday edition of the College Football Power Hour. He is Jason Fitz. That is Adam Brenneman. And I am Caroline Fenton. USC takes it in Vegas 27 to 20 over the LSU Tigers. We will be back here Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. We'll have a look ahead to week two and recap our final thoughts from week one. Find us right here on Yahoo Sports YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. It's the College Football Power Hour and we are out.